please if you can hear me just give me a thumbs up or something so can you hear me please okay let me do this yes okay yes abraham good 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 to have you um good morning brother. good evening there <laughs> okay it's, it's morning it's morning on this side good but it's evening for you right no it's morning here it's um oh it's morning here yeah it's a little past it's a little past um nine uh, 17 past nine Oh, okay, okay, okay. Good. Good, good, good. So I want to welcome everybody this morning. Um, we still have people joining, but we're going to start this meeting. We, uh, we had some little technical challenges this morning, but good, we are, we are here, and we're going to just uh, have this done um, um, in a manner that God wants it. So I want to welcome you, Eric, you're welcome. Uh, Henry, you are welcome. Uh, John, you are welcome. Lucy, Michael Smith out of SA, you're welcome. Nancy, you're welcome. Nanita, Nanita out of Philippines. I think it's about five or something p.m. in the Philippines. Ruth, Sophia, uh, Wisdom, and Ahuma Kwame. God bless you all. So this morning, we want to set sail and uh, we just want to get into this. Now, there are going to be two sessions, um, as usual, as we've had in the previous meetings. And Abraham is speaking out of uh, today. Um, Abraham is speaking out of uh, not his usual base, but he's in DC. And it's um, past five um, this morning in DC. Uh, <laughs> it's wonderful to have to, to have um, Abraham uh, this morning. So what I'm going to just simply do is to just tell you a bit about Abraham, and then um, I'm going to turn it over to to him. Now he's a very dear friend, and um, I have two profiles for him. So um, sometimes I don't know which of the profiles to read. So I'm going to read. His official profile. Don't need to read anything, brother. Yes, <laughs> two profiles because um, I wrote one for him myself. Um, I I I put stuff together, but uh, both of those profiles reflect who he is, and it speaks basically to the bottom line, the very core of um, him as a person, the grace of God, the embodiment of the call of God upon his life, and so. Let me just tell you a bit about Abraham. Abraham John is an internationally known author and conference speaker. His calling is to preach the gospel of the kingdom in every nation and to equip the body of Christ to disciple nations by administering God's kingdom on the earth. He has been to over 50 countries, um, including Ghana ministering in churches and conferences and has authored more than 20 books. We could be talking about uh, 23, 25 books currently on the subject of the kingdom of God. Um, rediscovering the lost kingdom, rediscovering God's timing for your life, the power and the authority of the church, the gospel of the kingdom, and kingdom secrets to restoring nations back to God. Um, including books also like uh, Ecclesia, including books like Seeking, Entering, and Manifesting the Kingdom, and, and all. Um, he has um, um, uh, a, a very strong uh, apostolic calling upon his life and governmental calling upon his life to, to bring back God's original order and design. His passion is to see the body of Christ united and through uh, the church manifest and the true church manifest on the earth. The Holy Spirit has given him the key to crack the purpose code. And one of the unique anointings upon his life is to help people identify their individual calling and gifts and release them to fulfill their destiny. 
his teaching and practical training help the body of Christ restore and disciple, disciple nations. He has been a guest on several TV shows, including uh, Praise the Lord on TBN and other local channels. He hosts a program on Christian television network. His Facebook live shows reaches thousands of people every month. He and his family live in Denver, uh, Colorado. So let me just bring in a little bit of uh, something I wrote on him. I call him Abe. Uh, he's a dear friend. He's a dear brother. Uh, from the very time we met, I mean, it was, it was explosive joy, explosive relationship that we began to walk, walk in. And um, Abraham could literally just give me something and said, you can have this. You are my brother. And it's just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. So um, Abraham is one of the clearest voices in terms of the call of, uh, sorry, the kingdom message, the kingdom of God on the earth today. Abraham, I turn this over to you. The mic is yours and let's set sail. Thank you. Thank you, my brother Mark, for such a <laughs> kind and generous introduction. Wow, what do I say now? Thank you. I thank God for you for connecting us for such a time as this for God's kingdom assignment on the earth. And you and your wife, Gilda, my goodness, were such a wonderful host for me, arranged all the things within a short period of time when I um, had a layover, <laughs> 24 hours layover in Ghana. <laughs> And that was one of my fulfillment of my dream, you know, to visit Ghana. I've been praying. I knew a couple of people from there, but nothing worked out. But God has his way of doing things. So I really appreciate you and hold you dear to my heart and your family. And thank God for your spirit of pioneering into what God has for the country of Ghana and beyond. So thank you for inviting me to be part of this great kingdom advanced conversation. I'm so blessed to be here and with the rest of my kingdom family from around the world, Sophia and many of you I know <laughs> been part of the kingdom family for a long time, Nenita and many other and some new friends, new family members in the kingdom. Thank you so much for joining taking this time, it's like 5 a.m. here in Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm part of a conference here ministering, which will start in another two hours. So it's exciting. This is a, this is exciting moments. There's great stirring in my heart, in my spirit about this kingdom conversation. Thank you, Mark, for putting this together to bless people, to empower, to equip give them a glimpse of what God is doing right now and what is about to manifest on the earth in the near future. You know, every year, well, let's just pray and thank God for this moment. Join with me for a moment of asking the Father and the Holy Spirit to Jesus to come and help us understand, to decipher, rightly discern the times that we are in. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment in time that you brought us, all of us together from different parts, countries around the world, Father, to listen to your heart, listen to your heartbeat for such a moment as this, Father. I thank you for giving us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and understanding to discern the times correctly, that we won't caught up with the, with the signs, but we will will be caught up with the purpose, God's eternal purpose and plan for earth and mankind. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and bear witness in our hearts for our King and his kingdom. Lord Jesus, you are the teacher that we want to listen from you because you all the keys of our life and the kingdom that you've given to us and the keys that you've given to us. And we give you glory, honor, majesty, dominion, power, and, and strength belongs to you both now and forever. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen and amen. 
See, every year I ask the Holy Spirit to give me a word for the new year. So for 2020, nobody knew what was going to happen. You know, everybody was talking about 2020 vision and the Jewish year and this is going to happen, that's going to happen. Everybody was excited, but then the unexpected happened. This COVID thing happened. So 2020, around December, God gave me a word. Now, 2019, December, God gave me a word for 2020. What he gave me was only three words. And I sent it to all the people that will see our email. Um, the first word that God gave me for 2020 was change. Everybody say change. As you know, the world that we knew, January of 2020, is different now. Change has happened in every aspect of our life. Nations are shaken. Governments are going through shaking. Economy is shaken. There's no amount to put. There's no number to put the, the amount of financial loss to companies and businesses and airlines and industries. Change has already happened and it is happening in every aspect of our life. Then he said, this change will affect mainly three areas of our life. Our social relationship, how we relate, how we connect with, between each other, social distancing and mask and all those things that came about. Then he said, this change will affect the economy of this world. And it has happened. Companies and hundreds of businesses going out of business every day in the United States. It's very sad. It's very, very heartbreaking to see what people are going through. Then he said, this change will affect the way we relate with God. Because we were so stuck, a place called, a building called a church. Every Sunday morning we, we ran and many people, including myself many years ago, believed if I miss a Sunday morning service in a church building, Something wrong is going to happen to my life the next six days. God is going to punish me or strike me with the lightning. And guess what? God became so tired of the religious system. He said, enough is enough. He shut the entire religious places down for the six months. And as far as I know, nobody got struck with lightning from God because they didn't go to church on a Sunday morning. God is trying to help us redefine, realign, recalibrate our life and our assignment and our purpose and our priorities that he has given to us. Then the second word that God gave me for 2020 was fulfillment. Even in the midst of this change and shaking that we are going through, God is busy accelerating his kingdom assignment for you and I in our life. He's bringing the pieces together that you need. He's bringing the right connections into your life that you need right now so he can catapult to you, propel you into your kingdom assignment. That's what he's doing in your life. If you have a desire and a passion to fulfill your kingdom assignment on the earth. That's what is happening. Many people who went through our kingdom school training, they have been launched into their kingdom assignment this year. Things people have waited for 20 years, 50 years, people who couldn't find their mate for 50 years. They are 55 years old now, and they've been waiting, looking for a life mate. But this year, they were engaged. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So this is also a season, good time for God's people because every time there is a crisis in the natural, there is a kingdom opportunity hidden in that crisis. How do you know if you are living in God's kingdom? If you are processing when there is a crisis in the natural, that is a sign that you are a kingdom citizen living in God's kingdom. God promoted Joseph in Egypt during the time of famine. 
God has a way of working out his purpose through famine, through flood, through wars, through whatever challenges in the natural. It is the time for God's people to look up. God said, look up, your redemption is near. No rapture is near. What is near? Your redemption. God is going to redeem you out of your troubles. What affects the world? It wouldn't affect you because you're living in a different country called the kingdom of God. Like Isaac, when there was a famine, he sold the seed. People might have made fun of him. Hey, this crazy guy, he's plowing the field during a famine. There's no rain. He's, people might have said he's so stupid. Nobody does. But guess what? When the harvest came, Everybody came to Isaac begging for a piece of bread because God blessed him because he operated in a different system, different weather pattern in the kingdom, living from inside out, not from based on the circumstances, the pressures and the stress and the demands of life, but living from the kingdom of God that is within you. And you look at anybody like Esther. Esther was promoted because there was a crisis in the kingdom, in the palace. Anytime there is a crisis in the natural people of God, get ready. Tell somebody, get ready. I know I can't hear you, but say to yourself, get ready. God is about to promote you. If you've been going through the preparation in the last 25 years, <laughs> There is a preparation that has to go prior to the promotion, right? And God has been preparing you. So this season that we are in, this 2020 was an year of fulfillment. Things that happened in my life, in this ministry, I can't express my gratitude enough to God and to thank him. We reached more people during this pandemic, this lockdown, than any other years in my life or the ministry that God has called me. We trained more people personally during this lockdown than any other years that I have been in ministry the last 25 years. We reached more countries without traveling. Can you believe that? <laughs> we, God has enabled us to reach more nations during this pandemic without traveling, without ever catching a flight. This is my second trip since this pandemic happened in March within the United States. But God has been so faithful, my dear people of God. Just thank him for our life. Just thank him for what he's doing in our life. Then the third word that he gave me for 2020 was the word kingdom. He said there will be more people talking and preaching about the kingdom of God more than any other time in the history since the first century apostles left this planet. And it is happening. There's more people talking about the kingdom of God and the gospel of the kingdom than any other time that I've been alive. So I thank God. God, this is the most exciting time to be alive. And this is also the most decisive hour for this earth, this planet, and for your life. What you do now, what you decide to do in this season, I am prophesying over you. This is a word of the Lord for you. What you decide to do in this season is going to determine the next 25 years of your future. And if you don't do nothing right now, my Lord, my God, have mercy upon us. If you have not received a direction from the Lord, from the Holy Spirit, about your destiny, about your future, I need to pray for you. <laughs> or we need to pray for you. If you have not received a specific direction from the Holy Spirit regarding your future during this period that we are alive right now. Brother, my sister, I strongly encourage you 
strongly encourage you. <laughs> and guess what? I have something exciting to share with you. The Holy Spirit has given me a word for 2021. So I just shared about what happened in 2020. He already, usually he waits for until December to give me a word for 2021 or for the new year. But this year, unusually, he gave me a word for 2021 in the October of 2020. Because he said it's already started. This shift that we are experiencing in the spirit. It has already began in October. What is the shift? This is the word that he gave me for 2021. Are you ready? And you're going to hear from other prophetic voices around the world in the days to come. 2021 is going to be an year of transition. And this transition will affect or we have to be willing to make this transition in four major areas of our life. First, we are transitioning from religion into the kingdom of God, literally and really. Until now, people talked about the philosophy of the kingdom. And I know my good friend, my brother, Apostle Anderson, my goodness, there's Nobody can explain and express eloquently than Brother Anderson. I think you all heard and blessed by him. He said, in one of those meetings that I was part of, he said, just because we add the word kingdom into whatever we have been doing, we won't become people of God's kingdom. That is not kingdom. Just because we add the word kingdom to all the church activities we have been doing for the last 500 years, we won't become people of God's kingdom, my dear people of God. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived just by adding God, the word kingdom to every religious thing we have been doing. It is time to root out the religious cancer that has infected and destroying our lives and our nations for a long time. So the first transition that needs to happen in our life, beginning 2021, beginning actually now, it has started in October of 2020, transitioning from religion into the kingdom. The second area that I'm going to explain what each of this means in this, um, conference that we are part of the second transition that needs to happen is we had a transition from church to ecclesia and i'm going to explain all those what does that mean why we have to transition from church to function as an ecclesia because the word church has nothing to do with the word ecclesia in greek that jesus or the original text talks about the third transition that needs to happen in our life, we have to transition from all the covenant rituals into new covenant realities. That is the third transition that we need to take if we are going to flow in the kingdom assignment he has for us beginning this year. Then the fourth transition that needs to happen in our life is we need to transition from doing or looking for an employment into walking in our kingdom assignment. Amen? Those four major transitions that needs to happen. There are other areas that we need to transition. There are like 20 areas that we need to transition now, which is in one of the books that is coming out in two months, God's original design. But for this time, for this conference, we are going to focus on those four areas, transitioning from religion into the kingdom of God. When mankind lost God's kingdom with the fall of Adam, the devil came up with a substitute called religion. Religion was never God's plan for mankind 
It is a counterfeit. It is a substitute. And it is a poison that kills and destroys people left and right without even our knowledge. And what are the dangers of religion? That's what I want to share with you right now. The dangers of religion. I would encourage you to take notes. We all grew up in religion, including myself. My people of God, I was a Pharisee. I was one of the most religious people on this planet Earth. I couldn't accept anybody. I couldn't see my weakness. I was very judgmental. I was very critical of everybody because I was a Pentecostal. So I felt the superiority, spiritual superiority. You know, I speak in tongues. I'm a Pentecostal and I have a family tradition of all this Pentecostal Pentecostalism and my great grandfather. I am the fourth generation. So I had something to boast about, about my religious background. Oh my goodness, I was so depressed. I didn't know my purpose. I didn't know my calling. I was just waiting to escape this planet Earth because everybody told me, Abraham, rapture is coming. Get ready. You're going to fly away, oh glory. You have nothing on the earth. This earth belongs to the devil. The world belongs to the devil. Every wealth and riches, everything belongs to the devil and the bad people, the wicked people. You have this white dress, this white shirt, and this white pants. You wear those and clap your hands and everything will be okay. My God, my Lord, <laughs> that was a deception. And I didn't know it. You know the, the wonderful thing about deception? When you're deceived, you won't know it. That's why it is called a deception. Only when God removes the blinders from our eyes, then we see it and we say, oh my goodness, I can't believe that I've been doing this nonsense for this many long years. So what are the dangers of religion? Here is a picture and a, uh, religion makes out of us something that we were never meant to be. We were not created for religion. We were created for kingdom to establish, to build God's kingdom. The picture that you see, there's an airplane. Somebody took it and converted into his living apartment. That airplane was designed and was manufactured for one purpose, to fly. That is the purpose of aircraft, which is to fly. If an aircraft is not flying, it is not fulfilling its purpose. If you take an aircraft and made it in the living quarters, it is the greatest injustice you can do to that aircraft. And that's what religion does to an individual. Religion will take a person who were created in the image and likeness of God. We were created to function like God on the earth. Humans are the visible manifestation of the invisible God. Nobody has seen God personally. But if you want to see God, there is a visible manifestation that he put on this planet earth called humans human beings because we are created in the very image and likeness of god when you look in the mirror my dear friends my brother sister do you know what you're looking at you are looking at the image and likeness of god do you know why we study or should study about God? But the more you know God, it helps us to discover who we are. That's what theology is supposed to be doing for people, especially who goes to Bible schools and cemeteries. No, seminaries, like I did. I spent five years in cemetery. No, seminary. And there was not a single subject about the kingdom of God. In the five years of the training that I was in the seminaries. So 
we are created to function we are a copy of god's character nature creativity and qualities in our spirit man when we say image he doesn't look like our physical body in our spirit man we have the same qualities that god has whatever god does we can do in a smaller scale he creates we can also create from the materials that god has created he imagines we imagine we can think he thinks we can love god is love we can forgive god forgives whatever that you character that god has god has deposited in a in a in a minutest form in every individual you and i were created to reflect represent god on this planet earth but religion will take us and make us something out of us that we were never meant to be you know there was a time that i clapped my hands so hard and i broke the skin because i thought i was trying to make god happy i was a pentecostal i used to be a pentecostal remember what i said i used to be who am i now i'm a kingdom citizen a son and a child of the living god that's my identity so whatever religion put on you i strip that off in jesus christ holy name let transformation come to you right now as you're listening to this voice in jesus christ holy name the second thing that religion does to people religion removes us from the place we are created to be and put us in a cage or a box the picture that you see is of a shark if you take a shark when god created and put in the ocean it can grow to there are different kinds of sharks and different sizes of sharks up to 50 feet they just so i just saw a news couple of weeks ago they spotted a shark that is like 3500 pounds heavy that's huge and if you take that shark and put it in a glass container that we call aquarium or whatever it is you know that shark will never grow beyond the size of that container even though it has the potential even though it has the 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 inherent nature to grow beyond it but it limits its expression of everything it was created to express that's what religion does to us religion removes us from the place we were created to live in god's kingdom we were supposed to be kingdom builders we are kingdom builders by design whatever a human being does from morning from the time he wakes up till he goes to bed do you know what we do we are kingdom builders but the question is whose kingdom we are building are we building god's kingdom are we building our own little kingdoms or are we building are we being used by the devil to build his kingdom religion removes us from the place we were supposed to be as long as a creature or a thing is in the place where god created it to be it will never lack anything in their life it will find everything i want to tell you a secret do you want to find do you want to know the secret to find the resources to fulfill your purpose and your kingdom assignment be at the place where god put you by design everything god created has a purpose and a place and a function built in to fulfill that purpose for that shark as long as it remains in the ocean in the water where god created and put it that shark will never lack anything his food whatever it needs is in the place 
That's why when God mentions about what he creates, he said the fish of the sea or fish of the water. Fish were created to be in the water, not in a container artificially created by mankind, but in the natural habitat. Every creature that God created, everything God created, there is a natural habitat for that creature. And as long as that creature remains in the place where God put it, everything that need for its fulfillment, it will be found in that place. That's why when God says about the birds, he says the birds of the air. Look at the birds of the air. Why? Because God put them in the air. As long as that bird flies in the air, it will find its food. They don't have to reap. They don't have to sow. They don't have to have a refrigerator or a fridge for tomorrow's saving for next week. As long as that bird remains in the air, it will have everything it needs. So does the list of creatures and places and the resources God has attached. When God created mankind, this mankind also needed a specific place. That's why the Lord God came down and planted the garden. God didn't just leave Adam stranded on the earth trying to figure out, go to school, trying to find a job to make a living. No, everything Adam needed to fulfill his, his purpose, his assignment was found in the garden. That is the power of kingdom purpose. Write that down. The power of kingdom purpose. What is the power of kingdom purpose? Everything God has created belongs to a specific place as long as that creature or that thing remains in, that, in their assigned place, they will find everything they need to fulfill its purpose. Oh, that is so powerful. But mankind lost our natural habitat. This earth in as a planet it's not our natural habitat god came down and planted a garden what was the garden of eden are you ready hope you're taking notes garden of eden is the visible manifestation of the invisible kingdom of god just like humans are the visible manifestation of an invisible god what was the Garden of Eden? Is the visible manifestation of the invisible kingdom of God. Means the earthly version of God's kingdom. If you look at the garden, if you look at the, if you study the Garden of Eden, you will understand it was a kingdom because the word God used or the Bible uses when it says the Lord God came down and planted, that word planted in Hebrew, it actually means establish. He was not digging ground and putting some seed there. He was, he came with a blueprint from heaven. God does everything according to a pattern. Oh, I wanted to write this down. God is a God of purpose, patterns, principles, and plans. Are you writing down, please? God is what? God is a God of purpose, patterns, principles, and plans. Once you understand God's purpose, his pattern, his principles, and his ways, do you know what happens? You know him. Once you know him, you can trust him. Because everything he does, he does based on his purpose, his pattern that he revealed in his word, and his principles that he lives, and the plan he has for all eternity. He will never deviate from those four things. His purpose, his patterns, his principles, and his plans. So this garden that God put this mankind was not just a garden with the trees and plants and butterflies and birds flying around chirping. Nick, 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 nick. 
every morning, you know. <laughs> it was much more than that. It was the visible manifestation of God's kingdom on the earth. There are three times in the history of the earth with mankind, God's kingdom literally manifested on the earth, which is God's original idea, which is God's original intent for man. The first time God's kingdom manifested visibly on the earth was in the Garden of Eden. God's will was done in Eden as it is in heaven. There is no sickness in heaven. There was no sickness in the garden. There's no death in heaven. There was no death in the garden. I mean physical death, the death that God said that man would die when they disobey, that was the death of sonship. So when man lost kingdom, God, the devil, not God, the devil brought a counterfeit called religion. When man lost sonship, the devil brought a substitute called leadership. People began to go after leadership because they lost the concept of sonship in God's kingdom. People didn't know how to relate. The moment Adam disobeyed God, he lost the ability to relate with God as his father. Because the Bible says in Luke chapter 3 verse 38, Adam was the son of God. And that is the first thing he restores to anybody who believes in Jesus. According to John chapter 1 verse 12, anybody who believes in Jesus and receive him, God gave them the right to become. You have to become a child, a son of God. That word child or a son in the, in the, in the Greek is technon, means a child, not a matured son. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, this is so powerful. People, I am blessed. I am blown away what, <laughs> what the Holy Spirit is giving me. That's so you are hungry. I hope you're blessed. I hope you are receiving what the Spirit of God is imparting into your spirit man. You need this impartation into your spirit man. So open your heart and spirit to receive what he's saying. Because you need this for your journey that is ahead of you. Amen. Holy Spirit is saying you need this for the journey. You need this food, this meal that you're having right now for the journey that God has ahead of you. The next thing religion does to us, religion limits our potential. What you see in the picture it's a sapling of a tree behind a glass door or and somebody's house. And that is the same tree that you see above. If it is planted in the right place, if it is planted in the right environment, that tree has the potential, that plant that has the potential to become that huge, humongous tree that you see on the top picture. Religion limits potential. Religion will put us in a box and make us do the same thing for 50 years, 60 years. And we just think we are doing God some favor because we go to a thing called church every Sunday morning, sing three songs and two slow songs and hear a sermon and we thought, Oh, my religious duty is over for today. And tomorrow onwards, the next six days, I'm going to work to survive, to do a job for my living. How sad. How pathetic is that when God sent us to this planet for a kingdom assignment and we have no clue about it. We have no clue about why God sent us to this planet Earth for. People have no clue. I had no clue about the potential that God has deposited into my spirit, man. I never thought I could write not a book, but a page. Forget about book, just a page. <laughs> if you have told me, Abraham, you are going to write a page. <laughs> 
20 years ago, I would have laughed because I would be the least qualified person to write anything about God's kingdom. But the spirit of God comes upon you. It is not by might. It is not by power. But by his spirit, says the Lord. He has put his spirit upon you to do something naturally you couldn't do. That is the purpose of anointing. That is the power of God working through you. God gave us his Holy Spirit not to make us feel good about it. Not to tickle our side, you know, so we can laugh and roll and, and have an emotional frenzy. That is not the purpose of the anointing. The anointing is given to you to do something that you cannot do naturally in your own strength. What are you doing with the anointing that God has put in you? If you are just doing surviving, living like ever everybody else on this planet earth not even at least like everybody else because people are going to the moon people are going to the planet mars and we are not even living up to the natural capacity of a mere human being without the holy spirit without the anointing so we should be more productive than the people in the world because we have god we have the Holy Spirit, we have the Word. But if you look at the church today, church, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> I'm going to come to that point. Religion limits vision. We were created to live by vision, not by sight. Sight is of the natural eye. Vision is of the Spirit. Sight is is earthly vision is heavenly do you know what happened to the church world 50 years ago 1948 not 50 but it's almost 70 years when israel became a nation in 1948 all the end time preachers began to prophesy and say this is the last generation who will be alive on this planet earth Within 40 years, we are going to evacuate this planet. The church is going to vacate. We are going to escape. And you know what they did? They just waited for 40 years. That generation neglected, avoided the assignment God has given them. They just waited and survived. Then they disconnected from the culture, government, and everything that was happening in their nation. And the devil came in and took that opportunity to set his roots into every sphere of our community, education, media, government. Everything is overtaken by the demonic forces and his children, the wicked. And 1998, I think that was the 40th year since 1948. And they set a date for rapture. I'm not that old, but this is what my previous generation told me. And 1998 happened, nothing happened. Then they said 2000 is the year. My goodness. You remember the Y2K and all the nonsense we went through? The Y2K, Y2K came and went, and we are here 2020 October. What if? Our previous generation imparted the kingdom and God's vision to the next generation. We have a whole generation of people that are lost. People are more dissatisfied with religion and church as never before. There are more people leaving the church than coming to church these days. Because they're tired of church as usual. They're tired of religion because people need a cause to live for. When people get tired of religion and the church, if there is nobody to give them the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, do you know what would happen to that people? When people are tired of church as usual, 
when people are tired of religion, if nobody gives them the gospel of the kingdom, do you know what would happen? People will go the other extreme. They will become liberals, extreme liberals. That's what happened to a generation in this country of United States. Among the youths, they're becoming more socialist, communist, unusually liberal. Anything goes, everything goes. And they don't care. Because that is the byproduct. Those, that generation is a byproduct of a previous generation that failed to impart vision and purpose into the next generation. Religion kills creativity. Oh, religion will never encourage, promote creativity. But God is the most creative person that lives inside you and I. God introduced the introduction of God to mankind is as the creator first. In the beginning, God created, not prophesied, not healed, not taught, not played music. In the beginning, God created. And guess what? You and I are created in the same image and likeness of God. We have creativity that is waiting to be unleashed in you. The picture that you see like a basket, that's not a basket. That is a building somebody designed. And that hotel in Dubai, I've been there in Dubai at that hotel. Somebody built that, ocean in, at that hotel in an ocean. How? The creativity that God has put in mankind. If a, if, a, if, a, if humans decide to go to the moon, they can go to the moon. If humans decide to go to the Mars, they can go to the Mars. God has not put any limits to the creativity. If you can imagine something, that is the principle of vision. If you can imagine something, that means it is there somewhere. You cannot see something that doesn't exist. Can you try to imagine about something that doesn't exist? It, it may not exist in the natural, but it exists in the invisible, in the spiritual. So religion kills creativity. When, oh, Holy Spirit of God, religion makes us unproductive. Oh, I want to tell you another secret. You don't need to be a Pentecostal, born-again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking person to invent a new product. You don't need to be saved to become the CEO of a multinational corporation. You don't need to be a Christian to become a president or a prime minister of a country. Do you understand what I'm saying? But if you look at people, Christians, when God told me, when he began to teach me about this kingdom, he said, Abraham, there are two groups of people on this planet Earth. One is producers and the second group is consumers. He said, which group the church belongs? Are we the producing group, the productive group? Or are we just consuming the world is creating and manufacturing? Then we go on a Sunday morning and say this world doesn't belong to us. We don't want the world or take the world. And the world is not my home. And if you don't want the world, what they're making, let's make our own. Let's start manufacturing the things that we need as at least the essential things that we use instead of depending on the world, instead of making the wicked richer by paying our hard-earned money, let us start manufacturing. That is actually one of the transition that needs to take place worldwide. We have to go from depending on the world's manufacturing into kingdom manufacturing hubs in every country and nation. Religious makes, religion makes us unproductive 
just talking and talking and talking, but no products to show. Religion is all about conditioning. You might have heard the study that people have done. If you ring a bell, if you have a pet like a dog or a cat, and if you ring a bell, and every time you ring the bell, you give that dog some food, and the next time, it, and after it's been conditioned in its brain, the next time you just bring the bell, that dog will come because it thinks it is time for eat, to eat. And that's what religion does to people. It conditions them. When you hear a set of music, you don't even know what you are singing, but you just start doing things. Because we have been conditioned. Now we have to be reconditioned according to the kingdom mindset. According to the image and likeness of God. In Jesus' name. Every conditioning that happened to you and I, through religion and religious spirit, I break those patterns and mindsets and strongholds in Jesus Christ's holy name. Somebody say amen. We are not created as creatures of habits, like a pet, like a dog, or a, or a parrot to repeat something again and again and again and again. We are supposed to be led by God's Spirit because the Bible says those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. In Jesus' name. Religion thrives in wishful thinking and unattainable promises and God, goals. Religion is all about the pie in the sky. Someday God is going to do this. Someday our life is going to be all glorious. And it was glorious 100 years ago, 50 years ago. This so-and-so leader lived and great all these things. But right now, we have nothing. That is religion. Do you want to know the sign of the religious spirit? They always talk about a wishful thinking about the future. And always talk about something of the past somebody did 100 years ago, 500 years ago. But right now, we are like that bear trying to get into that building. <laughs> she can only wish to get into that because that neck entrance is impossible. That's what religion does. Unattainable promises and goals. God did not give us any unattainable goals. When Jesus said, seek first his kingdom, if it was impossible for us to find it, he wouldn't tell us to seek it first. God will not never tell us to do something if it was not, he didn't mean it, if he didn't mean it, if it is not unattainable for us in this life. And God wouldn't tell us to seek his kingdom first if we already had it. You only seek something you lost. The purpose of religion is to kill you before you discover and fulfill what you are born to be and do. That is the purpose of religion, to, to kill us. I remember Dr. Miles Monroe saying, the richest place on this planet earth is the graveyard or the cemetery because their lies, the dreams that people didn't fulfill, songs that you have never written, businesses were never started, ideas were never realized, inventions that never, never materialized. People went to the grave with their wishful thinking that someday, God is going to do something. Someday I'm going to be spiritual. Someday I'm going to be anointed. No, you are anointed right now. You are spiritual right now. You are a child of God right now. You have access to heaven right now into the throne room of God. You have come to Mount Zion according to Hebrew chapter 12 verse 22. Now faith is not tomorrow, not five years from now, 
now faith is. If the faith is not now, it is not faith. It's just a wishful thinking. So I plead with you, I beseech you, my friends, don't let religion kill you before you become what God created you to become. And this is the season that God wants to launch you into your kingdom assignment. And the question is, how do you find your kingdom assignment? That's why you need to join our kingdom school. It is free. We teach kingdom school free courses. Some of you already taken it and been blessed by it. Some of you are taking right now. Religion will take an individual that is created in the image and likeness of God and make a puppet out of that individual. Make us a puppet. Keep doing what do you know what really the definition of religion? Keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. I know that is the definition for insanity, but there is nothing more insane than religion. I have seen same traits, character traits in all religion. All religion is what? Repetition of some rituals or some mantras. Same thing, whether it is Hinduism, Catholics, or the church that we call it. We don't have written stuff, but it's been programmed, conditioned into our brain. We just know what's going to happen when we go to church, right? Every Sunday morning, you know what's going to happen next. After the music, you know what's going to happen. After that, you know what's going to happen. That is not kingdom. Religion creates alternative and fake realities. We have come up with this idea that if you shake and roll and laugh and oh my goodness that's the anointing that is that person is so spiritual that is not spiritual <laughs> that is a fake reality or an emotional frenzy and that's not the anointing either oh this is so powerful this is my favorite in all these things religion Oh, I was this. I was this. This is my testimony, people of God. I'm not blaming anybody. This is this was Abraham John 20 years ago. Religion will deceive you and cause you to serve the devil and his kingdom and then convince you saying you're serving God. Oh my Lord, my God, that devil is a liar. What does religion do to us? It will deceive us and cause us and use us to build his kingdom, the devil's kingdom, and then convince us, saying, oh, you're serving God, you're so spiritual. Remember the Pharisees in Jesus' days? What were, it, what were they thinking inside them? Just think. What were a Pharisee thinking? Because they thought they were the closest people to God. They were the most holy. We keep all the laws of Moses. My goodness. And we are serving God Almighty. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what they were thinking. But in reality, what were they doing? They were fighting against God and his very purpose. Because the... The God they were talking or they thought they were saying was standing in front of them and they couldn't recognize him. That is the power of deception. We will think that we are serving God, but we fight against God and his very purpose. That is the deception of religion. God created you and I to establish his kingdom on the earth. And do you know what we have been trying? We are trying to take everybody out of this planet. And we are waiting to disappear from here. So are we helping God and his purpose? Or are we fighting against it?
And this is the last, I believe, about religion, the dangers of religion. Religion is a poison that slowly kills people without their knowledge. You may have heard the phrase, the frog in a kettle. If you want to kill a frog, don't throw him into the hot water, it will jump. But if you put it in a normal room temperature water and start heating it up, that frog will sit there like he's having a fun day, fun time, you know? Look at that. He's so happy, but he doesn't know he's being fried from the bottom. And that's what religion will do to you and I. It's a poison that kills people without their knowledge. And you won't even know we are dying. And our purpose is being stolen. Our potential is being stolen. The kingdom of God has been stolen from us. And we just do this repeated habits or something. So I have a prayer for deliverance from this religious spirit. If you are interested, I am going to lead you in this prayer. I hope you can see my screen. This is the prayer for deliverance from the religious spirit. Are you ready? If you pray and if you mean it in your heart, God is going to do something powerful in your life today. Something is going to be broken off of your life. Something supernatural is going to happen in your spirit, man, today in Jesus' name. So I'm going to lead you in this prayer, okay? You repeat this after me. I will read it portion, part by part. Please repeat it after me. Ready? You don't need to, to just, 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 just Yeah, just repeat it in your own privacy. You don't need to unmute your microphone. Just repeat is anna is my friend from romania no i don't know char brett good to see you my brother and your dear wife name uh, i can see eu there <laughs> theophilus chris henry ruth abina good to see you all kamal victoria abina good to see all my kingdom family there so ready i'm going to lead in this prayer and God is going to do something powerful in you. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for exposing the works of darkness. Father, forgive me for allowing myself to be deceived by the religious spirit. Now, I renounce the religious spirit and all of its strongholds deceptions and roots from my entire being in the name of jesus i root out pull down throw down and destroy all the lies deceptions fear and strongholds that were formed in me by the religious spirit Fill me with the spirit of truth, wisdom, revelation, and understanding. Restore everything, Father, including my purpose and my assignment in your kingdom. I take back what the religious spirit stole from me and my generation. In Jesus Christ's holy name, I pray. Amen and amen. Somebody give a hands to the Lord. In Jesus Christ's holy name, let that deliverance be real in your life. Let every stronghold of religion be broken. Let God make you allergic to religion in Jesus' name. Next time when you get around religion, and religious spirit, you will feel allergic to it in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Say, Father, make me allergic to religion. 
That's powerful. <laughs> Next time when I get around religious people, religious jargons, make me allergic in Jesus' name. And man and amen. Something powerful has happened in you, my people of God. Where is my brother Mark? <laughs> Do am I done? Brother Mark? Yes, Abraham. Wonderful. I will, up, I will pick up again this evening. I believe I'm speaking again at 4 p.m. I'm going to be doing from the airport. Yes. But I want, I want to come. I want to come and do the ecclesia part. Only when we get free from the religious spirit, we can understand ecclesia is. Definitely. So in the afternoon session, we will be covering, touching actually, just touching on Ecclesia. Wonderful. So thank you. Thank you so much. So powerful. Great. This wonderful opportunity. Yes, great. Just before um, we turn it over to that um, short and brief and powerful discourse by one of our speakers, I just um, want to quickly um, ask, if maybe you have a question, you have a comment, you have some feedback, you have some interjection. It's important because this is a conversation. This is not uh, preaching and throwing stuff over your head and where you just walk away. And uh, he said, he is rather confused me more than I was confused. Sometimes it requires that you become blind so that you can see. But in that environment of blindness, God has placed able people just like Paul. God positioned able men um, around Paul, in order to lead him out of that blindness and lay hand on him and pray for him. And one of the things that we will also do uh, uh, today, after uh, the second uh, talk, is to, to pray strongly for anybody with any condition or connected to you, um, any ailment, any disease, any burden. Uh, I just feel so strongly that certain patterns ought to be broken. And um, we, will, we will speak into that as well. So um, for a brief moment, if there is any feedback, any question, please, um, the mic is yours. Before Abraham goes, um, uh, you can raise your hand. You can type your question. You can type your comment. Like I'm seeing people writing. I, um, let me see. Let me just pick it from... Um, yes, somebody wrote, uh, Victoria says, Father, make me allergic to religion in Jesus' name. Yes, you must become allergic. Sophia says, so powerful. Thank you, Apostle Abraham. Bless the name of our King. And um, Nanita, thank you, Apostle Abraham. Um, Ruth from Ghana. Ruth says, God bless you, Abraham John. Thank you. And Tio, I think this is Tio from Ghana. Says, thank you. God bless you. Good, good, good. So um, any question, any feedback, please. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, Michael. OK, how are you? Good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I just want to thank, uh, want to thank you, uh, Pastor Abraham John, for for the word. I think, uh, Mark, that from last night, uh, it's like a flow from the first session, the second one, this one this morning. You can you can see the flow. Like the first one was an introduction. Then we move further deeper into it. So I'm very excited for tonight. Uh, for me, uh, I love the kingdom message. Uh, uh, I was also Pentecostal. I grew up Pentecostal. And uh, what I discovered when I look into my life uh, in the past, that uh, uh, the moment I heard about kingdom message, and Apostle John uh, spoke now about uh, Miles Manro, uh, I remember the first time I heard him, something changed in my life. Uh, and then uh, the kingdom message fade away uh, for 
five, six years, and then I heard it again uh, with Pastor Charles, and now, and then something changed again. So I believe the most powerful message in the earth is the kingdom. Uh, uh, but what I discovered from us here in South Africa is that we have my, kingdom for me is about functionality in the ecclesia. So wh what I discovered up to now, listening and this morning again, listening uh, to the, the, the statements about what the religion does. So wh what I think what we try to do, we replace the functionality of the kingdom with religion functionalities. And then we brought it into the ecclesia. And what we actually done is that uh, uh, we, we make it actually powerless because you cannot bring the functionality of religion into ecclesia and then you want uh, what God ordained us to have. Uh, you, you, you cannot do that. So we try to do that. So that is why a lot of us, with us we have a problem with the youth. The youth is leaving the church because of functionality, because of religious functionality in the church, in the ecclesia. So uh, for me is to go back and to see what have I built as ecclesia, what is accurate, what is authentic, what is the blueprint of ecclesia, and then go back and see what is the blueprint, what is the authenticity of kingdom functionality. When I give, I, I must give according to the kingdom. When I pray, whatever I do, I must do it according to kingdom functionality in the ecclesia to get the accurate uh, evidence at the end of the day. So I'm very glad and thankful for what I've learned from last weekend, last night, the two sessions, and now Apostle John did a great job just on <laughs> That sort of uh, message of the religion. I'm excited to hear further about the Ecclesia. So thank you very much. Up till now, I can really start to make some changes. I know there's a long way, but I, I really uh, learned things uh, rapidly now in this time. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. Which part of South Africa are you in? Uh, uh, I'm in uh, the Western Cape, Cape Town. I'm okay. about 125 kilometers from Cape Town on the route to Namibia. So you drive from Cape Town on the N7 to Namibia. So on that road, you come through my town about 125 k's. So if you maybe come one day to Cape Town and you drive on the N7, you can come to me. You can come and visit I, I was there last year. <laughs> last year in Cape Town. Oh, okay, okay. That was good. Thank you. Thank you for that great comment. God bless you. Wonderful. Yes, yeah, so I see Henry Kamau. Henry. Hi, 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 Mark. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, thank you very much, John, for that uh, great exposition on the kingdom. Uh, I hope I'm audible enough, eh? Yes, you are. Thank you, thank you. I know it is a great exposition because we know the dangers of religion. Religion has actually put people in bondages for many years without uh, deception of escapism. Mm -hmm. Yet, God created the heavens and the earth and he gave this earth to us as his son to take dominion on his behalf. And of course, uh, to be productive and to manage it. Actually, we are managing it on his behalf. Yet the region has deceived us that we are flying away. Yet God gave this one and he told us we have to manage it on his behalf. So we, one wonders then we are flying away to where? And this is what God has given us when he said he created us in his own image and likeness and he gave us this assignment. So I want to commend Apostle John. That was very good, very deep exposition, very insightful. So it is to deliver us people from that deception and it will help us walk in the kingdom and walk in the path of the ecclesia because we are part of the ecclesia and we look forward to hearing uh, the other session of the ecclesia because we are part of his government, the part of the, 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 the government of the kingdom 
that will transform things here on earth and of course bring the aspects of God's kingdom, the heavenly aspects here on earth as a way of governance. So thank you very much for that deep exposition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God. Yes. Okay, so I saw, uh, okay, so Lucy, just a moment. Uh, Tio, I saw Tio's hand up. So after Tio, then comes Lucy. Tio. Uh, thank you very much. And it was, it was just, um, it was a powerful session and I've learned a lot from, from what Apostle Abraham said. I think mine is more of, of a question or Yes, of the question. The, um, the thing is, um, if maybe, for instance, you find yourself in a place where maybe you've identified that maybe the religion setting over there is, is a bit high, um, um, maybe would like, can you advise on maybe some of the things maybe you can, you know, do, do um, to gradually maybe, you know, not only you, but um, 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 try to help as many people as possible. Maybe I know you'll be praying and you'll be, you'll be doing some other things, but are there other suggestions that you could suggest to, to, um, to help make it more e effective for people to also maybe identify and come to this understanding that you have, you have provided us today? Because I, 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 I feel it's a great teaching and a lot of people need to hear hear this so that we can all you know come out of that bondage that that um, that mental um, um, prison so that we can be free and 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 and, and fulfill our full um, potential here on earth so maybe any suggestion that might help to um, to 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 address that i i don't know whether the question is clear you know the suggestion is constantly hearing the kingdom message. You know, when Jesus selected his disciples for three years, he trained them on the subject of the kingdom. He never mentioned anything about church or ecclesia until he made sure they understood what kingdom, his kingdom is all about. For our case, for my case, I never heard a message on the kingdom. I heard everything about the church and rapture and flying away, like some of you are saying. Everything about the church meeting, programs, outreach, evangelism, church planting, and all those things. That's not what Jesus taught and preached. He taught about the kingdom for three and a half years. And then just before he went to Jerusalem to die on the cross, that's when he introduced the ecclesia. So the disciples, when they look at the Ecclesia, they looked at it from a kingdom perspective. But for us, because we are so immersed in church mindset, when we hear the kingdom, we try to look at the kingdom from a church perspective and we miss it. That's where we have started this kingdom school. Anybody from the world, it is free courses. We offer three courses now. You constantly hear the word and the message of the kingdom until there's a shift in people's mindset. In our mindset, actually, it takes time. It took Jesus three and a half years with the disciples. He didn't just lay hands on them and said, be the apostle, the best apostles that, you, that the world has ever seen. No, Jesus had to walk them through a process to take them from the old covenant rituals into the kingdom reality and the functionality, like my brother Michael, I think, was saying about the functionality. It took him three and a half years. Even after the three and a half years, they didn't get it fully until the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. That's when things clicked in their spirit, man, and said, now we see at least a glimpse of what Jesus has been trying to communicate with us for the last three and a half years. So what we can do to people is sharing with about the kingdom from a kingdom perspective and also reading books on the kingdom. There are so many wonderful books available right now 
training, equipping people to make that transition from religion into the kingdom. And it's not an easy process. Uh, even though I was preaching <laughs> under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it, it was so easy for me. Let me tell you, transitioning from religion into the kingdom is not an easy process. It is a death to life. It's like going through the eye of the needle, like a camel going through the eye of a needle. Everything will fight against it in us, people around us, our uh, sometimes our own family members that we'll have to distance from for the sake of the kingdom. Like anybody who walked in their kingdom assignment. Oh my goodness, Lord, do you want me to share this? So when you're born into, I think somebody needs this this morning. When you're born, you're born into a natural family. But when you discover your kingdom assignment, you're born again, you're born into a kingdom family. So your natural family may reject you, whether it's a church family, your own, your own kith and kins, because you don't fit there anymore. Just like Joseph, David, Moses, even Jesus. But God will bring you to a kingdom family where you fit to fulfill your kingdom assignment. Don't fight for acceptance. Don't push anybody to receive you, to accept you. Like Jesus said, if somebody doesn't receive you, shake your dust and keep walking. Because <laughs> I have seen with my, in my life when, when the natural kith and kin don't receive the revelation and the calling of an individual, they go fighting with them for acceptance. Please don't do it. Leave them alone. And they will come around at the right time like Joseph brothers did. They will come to benefit from the blessing that God has given you. Until then, don't fight for acceptance. If they reject you, that is part of the process. Just to encourage you. Great. Um, let's see. I think Lucy. Lucy. Are you there? Yes, yes, I am. Wonderful. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, wow. <laughs> what is really dawning, dawning on me is it's, 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 it's actually kind of painful when, you, when I've realized that uh, religion messes with my identity, the identity that God has given. And uh, when, when you, you spoke about, when you spoke about uh, thriving in wishful thinking and, and that unattainable promises, it's, it's just dawned on me that there's so much that I've thought about. There's so many great things that I've thought about. It means it doesn't stop me from thinking really about great ideas or having great dreams, dreams, but it messes with my mentality and my thinking on me being able to achieve what I'm seeing. So in a way, it, it messes with creativity in a sense that it makes me see it, but accessing it, <laughs> like that's just so painful for me. That's just the reality that is currently dawning on me. I can actually imagine it, but accessing that because of the, missed, the, the, the misrepresented identity that has been messed with and uh, causing fear and causing some sort of smallness, even in even the way I see things and even the way I see what I can achieve. So that's really what I, I'm currently processing even as I hear everything. Yeah, that's just what is in my heart that I wanted to share. Wonderful. Great. Um, let's see, any more comments? If there is none, I want to say, Abe, thanks so much. It's, it's wonderful. And anytime you hear the message of the kingdom, um, all of us may, may be very familiar with this. Okay, so I see my one and only 
brother. Um, just a moment. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me let you go. You you go through, and then I make my comments. Abraham, you... Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. Good word, brother. Good, just, good, just, solid word, brother. Just like when God called him out of the ticket. Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> I see somebody that I don't see there. <laughs> I hear. Let, let, let me let, let me say that this is this is this is wonderful. This is really what I would define as the spirit of the age in terms of the, the Holy Spirit causing people to begin to move towards their purpose, to move towards their destiny. And and one of the reasons I feel that people don't get why we talk about a, a religious spirit. It is because of what it robs you, what it robs us from, what it robs the, the entire kingdom from experiencing. If God has set you on a, a, with an assignment upon your life and that thing does not allow, that thing is not allowed to come to fruition, the completeness of the purposes of God that impact not just you, but those that are supposed to benefit from you become impacted too. And there's such an alignment. Oh, this is really a season of an alignment back to functionality. It's a season where the word of God is being released to, to create the productivity that the kingdom of God was designed to produce in the lives of the people and the environment to which it is called. And I really sense that you, you touched something, Abraham, there that I'm saying, yes, God, cause there to be even more forums, more avenues, more context, more release of the Spirit of God to free people to the assignment that God has called them to. And, and not just to be blinded by the regulation of expectation. Well, I can't do this or I, I know I'm supposed to do this, but I'm locked in a system that doesn't allow me to do that. And just continue to preach, brother. Continue to just release that thing. You put a smile in my heart, Abraham. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> hey, brother, Thank you. Okay, so I was just about saying that um, anytime, and all of us are familiar with this, um, we can relate to this. You know the difference between um, when you drank, um, say, some juice or some fizzle drink and you, you, you take in water. The difference is very, very clear. And that is how the message of the kingdom is. Um, you would have been eating... You know, some time back in Ghana, there's this thing called fast food, and there's still fast food anyway. But this fast food had a special name called Check Check. Um, it was done by young men and young ladies, and it was really a fast food. You just go stand by the roadside, and they prepare this for you, and it's fried rice. That was almost the first introduction on the public, on the larger scale, fried rice. It was all over the place, all the street corners and all. But some of these things uh, have, have serious health implications because either they were not done right or they were not done appropriately. And it's the same thing that applies to us. When we hear the message of the kingdom, us against what we would have been uh, drunk from, religion is, is an insidious part. Religion is a bluster. Religion is, um, um, is evil. Um, uh, somebody said about 90% of what Christianity does today has nothing less to do with God or even the Bible. We are just on our own. We are finding our own means and, and our own roots. It is time to really, really, really sit back and begin to think and uh, question every single thing. I'm not talking about doubting God, but, but putting things before you and asking the very serious, salient, hard questions and asking the way forward. The, the issue of return to the blueprint is that we stand in the way. God says that stop, stop, stop running. Stop, stop, stop running. Stop running, stop clicking, stop, stop chasing and ask for the Asian path. And so um, we bless God for this uh, good, good conversation. Now, um, Abraham runs um, um, a kingdom training school out of Denver and any location he finds himself, he still continues to teach these subjects. And there are currently about three courses that are going out there. And um, uh, the first one is Rediscovering the Lost Kingdom. Second one is um, uh, Purpose, Gifts and Callings. And the third one is Seeking 
entering and manifesting the kingdom. And uh, we collaborate with Abraham as well, and we do, we do uh, uh, some of those things also from this end as well. Um, it's a great opportunity to seek the kingdom, understand the kingdom, and join like-minded people. So look out for the next um, ads on these schools. Either it's happening, uh, not either, uh, and happening in, uh, in, out of the U.S. and happening out of Ghana. You are free to join. We, in fact, on this uh, discussion today, we have some of the people, Abraham, who participated in the previous school who participated in the previous school out of Ghana. And um, somebody told me, said, listen, this thing is affecting the way I think and the way I do things. So um, look out for it. And it's going to be a good, good, good time um, together. So Abraham, thank you so much. God bless you. God thank bless you. you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank God for his grace. It's all his grace. Nothing, nothing else. Great, great. Okay, so uh, folks, um, Shabbat, we, we, we're going to um, hear Shabbat for some 10 to 15 minutes before we sign off. We are just within good time, even though we, we had technical challenges and started late. But um, yes, I'm writing, man. Ooh, right here. Great, great. Uh, just a couple of thoughts I would really like to. Uh, throughout, you know, springing out of what's basically transpiring. Um, let me just say this. I believe there is a delivered and uh, a release world. All right. And as, as we are capturing this, it is really bringing transformation uh, in our own individual context, where we are breaking away from all positions and, and that word is basically bringing us into a new expression as it were. Um, areas are being activated, uh, sight is really coming upon us and just by the uh, context of the atmosphere this morning you could feel the heaviness and the weight and the potency of what God is doing so I think it is significant that there is a new release, there is a new shape, uh, a new definition, uh, a comprehensive site is being downloaded. And um, what is also being activated, uh, uh, various building capacity uh, and compositions are being activated. And all of that is as a result of a release word, you know? Um, and that, that is basically springing out from <clears throat> the issue of the arrival of the kingdom. Uh, when we hear and uh, the release word, um, our sight is calibrated that we can now see correctly. We can now see accurately. There's absolutely no distortion. So we are not seen as men with trees, but we are seeing with crystal clear precision. You know, sight of a preferred future, a preferred reality is captured. And, and, and that gaze is really speaking significant to our context. So we are receiving sight. We are gaining sight of a preferred location, a preferred future. And um, th that position is positioning us to, uh, to, uh, be authorized in our building, our initiatives, our, uh, our accurate implementation of, uh, of the intent of God and the things of the kingdom. All right, so that side I think is absolutely critical and uh, we would have uh, been able to really feel that even this morning. There is a pristine sense of sight as to where it is we are going, what it is that God really wants us to embark upon and we see the, the 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 falsified systems in which we have really been trapped in the cages that has entrapped us and has diminished the potent uh, uh, deposit of god in us hey the purposes of god that was deactivated by the fact that we became entrapped in a false structure as it were and not realizing that we were created 
to bring divine expression to bear upon our environment, wherever the environment is, wherever we are at. You know, we were created to cause that expression to bear. So this is absolutely beautiful. Um, <clears throat> so the, the, the prevailing environment, wherever we are at, does not provide definition, all right, to the context of our initiatives. That definition comes from him. It is he who defines what the purpose is, what the, 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 um, st the structure should be like, what the uh, context of our undertaking is. So not my environment. The prevailing environment may say this, but there's a, a phrase that I would have heard a long time ago, that the kingdom of God is altogether other. It's almost like a counter movement. It is a counter movement actually, that this is going against the grain. Imagine Noah building a boat on dry land where there is no rain. You're going against a prevailing environment. And that's what God is really activating in us. And the cleansing of the residue of corruption in us is of absolute significance. And, and folks, I think this is beautiful where we are at. We're at a very uh, beautiful location. And I would just encourage us to look and capture sight, capture sight, cling on, latch on to that thing. And may we experience a tsunami like we have never done before, a tsunami of invasion from the kingdom of God. So these are just some thoughts I want to throw out there in, in, in um, uh, so, so to keep us pondering and to uh, cont continue to basically muse upon what we have heard. So back to you, Mark. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we, uh, on this note, we want to just uh, have um, some announcement from 